This was the first time she was stepping out of her hut in years, and the villagers all looked at her in shock as they never believed that Nana was still alive. Once upon a time, there lived a very beautiful girl named Nana. Nana was born a normal girl, but as time went by, she grew older and noticed that she was now growing long beards. This made Nana so insecure about herself as people in the village laughed at her, calling her a boy girl. Whenever Nana walks past them, they would throw funny remarks at her saying that she was gradually transforming into a boy. The girls in the village refused to be friends with her as they were too ashamed to be associated with a girl who grew beards. This made Nana so sad as she made up her mind never to leave her hut for any reason. Her mother did all she could to encourage her to overlook what the villagers were saying about her. But Nana could not shut her ears to the horrible names that the people called her. She thought to herself that her best bet was to excommunicate herself completely from the villagers as she made her hut her safe haven. This was not an easy decision for Nana, who wished her life was not so complicated. She attempted to take her life on several occasions, but was dissuaded by a still voice in her head which kept assuring her that everything would be all right. For years, no one heard or saw Nana, and the villagers began to peddle rumors that Nana was dead, but no one knew for sure, especially when Nana never showed up at her own mother's funeral. One day, some villagers were talking about Nana, when a young man, who recently moved into the village, heard all they said and approached them. He asked them where Nana lived and they directed him to her hut, which was a short distance from where they stood. The young man was so curious and decided to visit Nana's hut. He knocked on the door, but no one opened the door for him. The young man kept knocking for hours and decided to enter the hut to see if anyone was around. And to his greatest surprise, he saw Nana sitting at the corner of her room, looking so sad. The young man approached Nana and introduced himself to her as Kwame. He asked her why she decided to lock herself up in her hut. And Nana explained to him that she hated her beards and wished it would all go away. Kwame listened intently as Nana poured out her heart. He could sense the pain and loneliness that had consumed her for years. Nana went on to explain how the taunts and ridicule from the villagers had taken a toll on her self-esteem, leading her to withdraw completely from the world. It was then that Kwame told her that he had been looking for her for months. He was from a faraway village and had traveled from one village to the other in search of Nana. Nana opened her mouth in shock as she could not understand why Kwame had been looking for her. Curious to know, Nana asked Kwame why he had been looking for her for months and Kwame told her to journey with him to his village as there lies her answer. Nana, although skeptical, agreed to follow Kwame to his village this was the first time she was stepping out of her hut in years and the villagers all looked at her in shock as they never believed that Nana was still alive. They laughed at her as she passed, calling her horrible names, but Kwame encouraged her not to listen to them as true beauty went beyond physical appearances. Nana was so excited to finally leave her village as all she ever felt there was resentment for her own people who hated her because she was different. They journeyed for hours and arrived a very small village. Kwame welcomed Nana to his village 
Anana realized that the people of this village were extremely friendly right from the village gates. Nana was welcomed with smiles and compliments from random villagers who seemed not to care that she had beards. This was shocking to Nana who had never felt disappreciated in her entire life. She walked with Kwame for some minutes and arrived at the king's palace. To her greatest surprise, she saw a little girl who looked so sickly laying by the palace gate. Filled with compassion, Nana approached the sick girl and to her surprise, the girl was healed instantly. Nana could not believe what happened and looked at Kwame in shock. They walked into the palace and Nana met a girl who looked exactly like her. She had beards too like Nana and Kwame introduced Nana to the girl as Princess Nene. Confused as to what was happening, Nana asked how this was possible and Kwame revealed to her that she, Nana, was the long-lost daughter of his father, the king. Nana opened her mouth in shock as she never knew that she had a twin sister and that Kwame was her brother. Nana was still trying to wrap her head around what was happening when the king emerged from his inner chamber and approached her, welcoming her back home. Nana had never been this confused in her life. She asked how this was possible and the king narrated to her how he fell in love with Nana's mother many years ago. He wanted to marry her but his family kicked against it because he was of a royal blood and Nana's mother was seen as a commoner. The royal family mandated him to marry the daughter of the king of the neighboring village because she was of royal blood and he consented because they threatened to take the throne away from him if he went against their wishes. What they did not know was that Nana's mother was already pregnant with twins. In their kingdom, twins were seen as a taboo and thrown into the evil forest. So. When Nana's mother realized that she had given birth to twins, she pleaded with the midwife to keep it a secret and handed one of the twins over to the midwife, pleading with her to take the baby to the king while she ran away with the other twin. She told the midwife to promise her never to reveal that the baby was a twin and the midwife did as she was instructed and took one of the babies, Nene, to the king, revealing that the baby was the king's daughter. Nana's mother, on the other hand, absconded from the village with the second twin and settled in a far away village where no one knew her. However, after a few years, the king noticed that his daughter had begun to grow beards. He wondered how this was possible as no woman in the village ever had beards. He sought several solutions, but nothing seemed to work. One day, the king invited a seer to the palace, who revealed that the king's daughter was a twin. The seer went on to reveal that the twins will continue to grow beards till they are reunited, as their separation was the reason why they both began to grow beards. The seer revealed that the twins had great powers, which was evident in the beards growing underneath their chin, and that as long as the twins remained apart, the beards will continue to grow. The seer then went on to tell the king that twins were not a curse as everyone had thought, but that they were so powerful and capable of bringing fortune to a land. The king opened his mouth in shock as he never knew that his daughter was a twin. They began their search for the missing twin and moved from village to village, but no one saw or heard anything about the missing twin until Kwame bumped into the villagers who were talking about the strange girl with beards. Nana could not believe that she was a princess who had a twin sister that looked exactly like her. She was so overjoyed to finally be around people 
who understood her genuinely. As Nana reunited with her twin sister, the beards miraculously disappeared and Nana and her twin were so overjoyed. With their combined powers, their village flourished in a way that they had never done before. The twins never spent a minute apart as they caught up on lost time. One afternoon, the king received some visitors who revealed to him that they had come to take Nana away as she belonged to their kingdom and not his. They explained that the king's son came into their village to take Nana away and that they had come to take her back. The king, confused as to why the people needed her back, considering how terribly they had treated her over the years, asked their reason for wanting her back and they revealed that since Nana left their village, the people have been suffering and toiling. A very powerful man revealed to them that all he needed to restore back their wealth were some freshly cut strands from Nana's beards. The powerful man warned that he needed Nana present to cut the beards himself to perform the restoration ritual and that the people should ensure that they return with Nana or else their wealth would never be restored. The powerful man revealed that over the years, their village only prospered because of Nana's presence and the moment Nana left their village, all the luck that they had enjoyed for all these years we are taken away. When the king heard this, he sent his guards to call his daughter Nana and when Nana arrived, the people screamed in pain and disappointment as they noticed that Nana's beards were gone. They returned to their village sad and unsure of how to combat the pain and suffering that they were encountering. Everyone in the village began to regret how badly they treated Nana, not knowing that she was the source of their wealth and prosperity for all these years. As the people deliberated on what next to do, they heard loud screams of joy. Nana had returned back to their village, promising to restore their wealth permanently and the people were so overjoyed. As seasons passed, the village began to flourish in ways that they had never imagined. Nana, who was once rejected and insulted by the villagers, became their only beacon of hope, and the people regretted all they did to her as they tendered their heartfelt apology to her, promising never to discriminate against anyone ever again. The lesson to be learned from this story is that our words are powerful and can either break or uplift someone, so we should ensure to always speak kind words to one another instead of hateful words. It is also worthy to note that oftentimes in life, we never know the value of what we have until we lose it, so always be kind to one another because life in itself is unpredictable. I hope you enjoyed the story. Like, subscribe and leave a comment. It helps us grow our channel. I'll see you in our next story. Bye.